Okay, so once I get into the water and I've, you know, I've gotten in and I've done my breaststroke, so that's my acclimatisation and some people will, you know, splash water on themselves before they get in on the back of the neck and that, but for me I just get in, do my breaststroke, two or three strokes is all. Then I put my head down and I swim front crawl. For somewhere like here in the 40 foot, I'll head out to the swim boys, which is the marked swim zone. I'll go to the first boy and then I'll assess how I'm feeling um, because some days you might just not be feeling it. You might just have that anxiousness that doesn't leave you and that might be a day where you turn around after five minutes and you say well, I'm done now and that was enough for me. And if it's a day like that when it's very cold, rather than coming in here and swimming three boys, swim to the first boy, come back to your start point. If you feel good, do the same distance again. So it's just about monitoring your actual swim location. I never feel the need to go with the crowd so you know I'd often swim with people and we'll decide before we get in what the max we're going to do is but if if we decide if right we're going to do two boys and that's all we're going to do and we're not going to decide in the water we'll do three boys it's perfectly acceptable for me to say at the first boy I want to come back now and I'll see you in there. Your breath is a really important part of it. If you find that you can't control your breathing, then nothing is going to work. And that's the same in every everything you do in life. If you can't breathe properly, you're not really going to be able to do a whole lot. It's kind of monitoring how, how you feel cold-wise. And that's something that the longer, the, you know, the more used to swimming in winter you are, the more you get to know your own reactions. If you're in the water and it's cold and you feel cold, but suddenly you think you've turned a corner and you feel really warm. Like you haven't turned a corner, something is going on in your body there. So that's a, that's a real signal that it's too much and you need to come out. Feeling like you can't use your limbs is another thing. Your legs might just feel like they've gone dead or your hips could quite often cramp up, which makes it hard to move. But it's, it's just, it's your body's going into that recovery mode where it just wants to go into a little ball. If you find that you're not able to clear the water with your hand is another thing, just because your muscles are starting to cramp up. Dizziness, if that comes in at all, and that can happen for people at different times because everyone's blood pressure is going to be different, but dizziness is a real indicator to come out. One thing I notice is your mouth starts to feel numb. I'll find that the tip of my tongue can go a bit numb. I know that's something right, okay, I need to be on the return leg now. Something I do with my fingers is, can I, can I touch all of my fingers? Not so much of a problem if you can't touch your baby finger and the next one, but if you can't do an okay sign, that's definitely, you know, you're too numb and you need to get out. And I think if you're swimming with people, like the reason I say wear clear goggles is if I feel that my swim buddy is, you know, not keeping the line that they're swimming in or I just feel there's something not right about them, I can stop them and ask them a question. You know, you can ask people simple questions like what's your name or what's your address. If they don't know their answer, that's a clear sign that something's gone wrong. But also while you're speaking to someone, um, you'll see their reactions of their eyes in clear goggles. So if someone's eyes aren't reacting as they should, that's another real warning sign that you need to get people out of the water.